One of the things that we did a number of years ago was develop the Rock Solid Foundation tribute. It was a way of recognising our Indigenous alumni. A couple of years ago, it was a really big anniversary year for ECU. ECU had an anniversary. Uh, it was an anniversary year in terms of Edith Cowan herself. And it was also the anniversary year, the 60th in fact, of when Dad graduated as ECU's first Indigenous alumni. It was too good an opportunity with those three anniversaries for us to not do something that really celebrated the success of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander graduates of ECU and try to track some of their journey. So it was a big project. We had to try to identify all of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students that we had who had graduated. And it started out small. In the first 10 years, there were only four. In the second 10 years, there were only another four. In the third 10 years, there were 15. And after that, everything grew exponentially. It was fantastic in terms of not just the numbers, but the disciplines of study that people were undertaking. I don't know that we would have ever realised that richness and the story of that success had we not thought to do that work. We had 60 years worth of graduates that we wanted to display. Identifying graduates, this was a big challenge, is that we had 60 years worth of data to go back and, and massage the data systems so that we could capture those names and have them included into our 501 names that we have displayed out here in that first 60 years. We had many people involved. Tracy in managing the database list, um, coordinating those name searches. Bob Somerville taking the lead on using the Aboriginal teachers networks through the education department and many of our key people that we know through Edith Cowan, people stepping into the space and, and lending a hand. You know, in looking to display those names, we needed to think a little bit differently from you know, the gold embossed oak honour boards that'll be placed somewhere and you get a, an invitation once to visit it in your lifetime or do we go for a, a display somewhere else out in the field at the front of house if you like. It needed to be something more physical and more attainable and touchable for people. And not only those individuals whose names are on there, but importantly for those support networks and people who look up to those champions who've come through and graduated from university. But I think something that stands out in the landscape that's a bit unusual looking and a bit different, but with a cultural lens applied to it, has greater depth and meaning and opportunity for us to display those names and hence we came up with the design format that we have here. At the graduation time of the year, towards the end of the year, at about eight, nine o'clock at night, a little bit north of overhead, there's a star constellation, Yokola or Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. And I thought, what if we had representation of those stars put down onto the ground here? What might that look like? And so in talking with Noel, he immediately loved that idea. So seven being an important number in Noongar traditional cultural heritage, and indeed contemporary heritage in many different things that we see. Marriage laws come through from sevens. You divide those sevens into your two main kinship groups from the southwest, and you get four teens. This time of the year, you'll see sevens reflected in the family groups of the Coolbarity or the Magpies. So I went away and did some more research around that. There's a couple of different references for the seven pillars of wisdom that pop up. And you see the seven pillars of wisdom referenced in the Bible. Now usually the Bible is written in the he form, the father, the son, he did this, he did that. But in Proverbs 9.1, we hear that it's written in the she form. And it talks about her getting her learned house of wisdom in order and hewn her seven pillars of wisdom, which is quite unique in that Edith Cowan University is the only Australian university named after a woman. So there was a number of wonderful intersects that crisscrossed and, and balanced out for us, which was nice. But increasingly, as I looked and read more about creation stories from other parts of Australia, for other Aboriginal groups and Torres Strait Islander peoples, the stories around the Seven Sisters constellation were remarkably similar. And then when I went further afield on a global search for some of those big stories that had been published from many different Indigenous groups from around the world, those stories again, remarkably similar. And so we have a physical monument here that displays a celestial body, which ties into creation or dreaming stories and have that link or reference via their story. 
back to country. So the Seven Sisters, or Yokala as we say in Noongar, is the, the constellation that we went with. So we've used granite stone from Wombagine, the quarry up by York, and we worked with the elders from out onto that country, as well as Noel from in here, and held ceremony to uh, make sure that those stones were received into country appropriately. Bruce Abbott from Replants Australia and his co-owner in the shared property out at Wombagine, New York filmmaker Tim Burns. Tim lives out there and in taking a busload of us from Perth out to there for a couple of day trips, we had Johnny Schnars from Honouring Indigenous Wargraves, so a Vietnam veteran with his bus driving. Seb Bufermo, who was a creative design student. Oh, and the, the stonemasons, of course, we had to bring Chris. Chris, as a young fella, worked this quarry so he knew that stone firsthand. He'd been out there and, and worked that a number of years ago so for him to go back it was like uh, you know, stepping back into his old workshop and he thoroughly enjoyed this opportunity on this project. We brought the stone chunks that we'd identified from up on the escarpment there down here to the Swan Coastal Plain and with a stone mason and a stone cutter in the Swan Valley uh, proceeded to carve those blocks and cut them into shapes that we able to utilise there for our plinths and plaques. The stones that we see through here, different shapes because of the natural form that each of those rocks were extracted from that quarry. So each of the stones has a raw natural side to it. It has a cut or drilled fractured side there as well, as well as a clean cut face and then a highly polished plinth on the outside of it. And I liken those cut faces and the, the natural faces on those stones to the individual who comes into to university and studies. So when you first come in, you're in your raw natural state and then over the journey of your degree through here, you get drilled and fractured, shaved, cut, honed, so you're this highly polished plinth on the way out. And all the names on those stones are all facing to the south with the exit to the north. So the last thing being symbolically as you do, you write your name on the wall and you exit out of campus into the big wide world. The colours that we see on the names form another part of the wonderful story that we wanted to share. So the colours come from our graduation regalia policy. So upon graduation, everyone's got their black mortarboard hat and black capes. And then there's colours that draped across people's shoulders, depicting the school of endeavour that they've graduated from. So for the first three decades, you see exclusively sky blue, which is reflective of education. So the teachers graduating through those first 30 years. And then into the fourth decade, we start to see some other colours creep in there. So we see some of the reds being from the health sciences, some of the dark blues being art degrees, and then a couple of green ones in there as well being the hard sciences, like environmental science and the like. A little knock-on flow effect project that uh, arose from the Alumni Rock Solid Foundation's monument that we have here. Within each of those decade block, we wanted a special way in which we could recognise those members and those members could easily identify with their decade cohort members themselves. So we came up with the idea, if we had pins that were struck that were exactly the same shape as the block that those people's names were emblazed upon, then at a quick glance, those members in a room would be able to say, oh, same pin, same decade cohort, and they're able to spark that conversation up about their time at Edith Cowan, or indeed prior to that, the teachers' colleges that make it up. When Edith Cowan University was proclaimed, that was really awesome. But it took a long time before I could really feel that connection as a past student. So the physical rock solid installation has been really good for me to ground me in the fact that while I connected through those friendly rivalries with past students from Claremont Teachers Colleges, the connection with the other campuses is strong as shown on the installation. Then when you see those family names repeated, you realise the connection that the universities had with Aboriginal people, because there's a trust. People know the history, the connection, and they're happy to go to a place where someone else in their family has been. What I find really awesome is the way it's grown beyond just the education faculty into whatever people want. I think because of my close connection to ECU, uh, and it's, it's hard to imagine right now my life without that connection, that just firms that up. It's, it goes beyond the fact that I studied at one of ECU's precursor institutions. It goes beyond the fact that heaps of people in my family, including one brother and one sister, countless cousins and untold aunts and uncles and so on, have also studied here. But the fact that Dad was the first made him not only a trailblazer in his time, but I think still, 
We still at ECU have lots of students, both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and non, who are the first in their families to seek a university qualification. The fact that we have this tribute is a physical demonstration to people that it's possible. The impact of the stone tribute, I knew was going to be pretty cool, I thought. Uh, you know, it's a pretty cool design, I thought, and the idea behind it, great stories. But I had no idea of the real personal impact that students currently studying, let alone the alumni, you know, feeling proud that their names are there for others to look up to. But, you know, the most personal story to me was uh, I had a student come to me at the emotional end of their tether. Everything had crushed in upon them. Their children's success at school too was failing. Her self-belief was zeroed out. Their postponed exam was coming up on the Tuesday the 29th and they were walking away from their studies, pulling the pin from everything and uh, going back to sort out home life. And I said, have you got a little bit of time? And I shared a story with her. We sat down on the grass here and I said, look, this is what I'm doing and this is why we're doing it. And she broke down in tears and she thought, oh my gosh. And I said, see this blank one over here? This seventh one's gonna be blank. That's where your name goes when you graduate. And it just, I get choked up by it. <laughs> she comes in on the Sunday, because I said, look, come in. Stonemason's coming in. He's gonna be putting the other plaques in there ready for Monday. So she comes in on the Sunday, sits with her kids, and they watch, and they watch Chris, and he's having a yarn there with them, putting the stones in place, and she shares that story with them. So they start doing this, and they said, so mum, if we engage back at school, and we, we, get, we finish our high school, and we get into uni, and we came here, Edith Cowan, we could study and graduate, and all of us could be on that same stone together. And with that, they all, they all started bawling, hugging. The kids re-engaged at school, finished school. One went straight direct entry, into university. Another one did the UPC for six months, university preparation course. The student comes along herself on that Monday afternoon and sat just a field, watched the ceremony, but didn't come in. Tuesday, sits her exam with her awesome ITAS tutor. And not only completes that unit, but gets a distinction for it, a distinction for a unit that she would pull in the pin from and walking away from everything. She's now graduated and her kids are both studying at universities. So that, that impact and that intergenerational play, you know, I, I, I know of it because I see it through my own family through here, but to see it ripple, ripple effect out is, is really powerful. Personally, it's pretty special. Granddad's the first graduate out there, so mum's dad, and then to have a mum and an auntie and an uncle also displayed on there, and to be involved in its design, and then the great pleasure on the day of the unveiling of having my two daughters assist me unveil that seventh blank stone. Four generations down, their permission statement, that big school is open for them as well, should they want it. Um, the, the permission statement's there, right there for them. The Rock Solid Foundation Rocks means a lot to me. It makes me feel that I can leave a name behind and inspired me, given me that encouragement. When I was down, a legacy for all my kids, for future students and for present students. And I'm thankful that I can be the first one within the family to have their name down. You guys have paved a way for me and I'm grateful for that. It's an inspiration. It's an inspiration to our current students and their families. It's an inspiration to people who are thinking about university, but might still be at high school or even primary school. It's an ongoing inspiration to every person who can come at any time and see their name in that tribute. And it's fantastic, I think, that we are, at least to my knowledge, the only university that has this kind of tribute. ECU, in this state and in this nation, plays a really important role. We're different to other universities. We are open, we encourage, we support. And while all universities might claim to do that, I think the inclusive practices that we implement on a daily basis make the journey for students much more enjoyable. You can't undertake a journey like that and not want to keep in touch. 
This is an important part of every student's life. You can't just let it go at the end. And the fact that ECU continues on its own journey as an institution, I think makes more and more people proud of their association with ECU. I love it when I go to a meeting or a function and people come up to me and say, well, as of yesterday at enrolment day, all my kids are studying at ECU. I don't know that that would have happened too many years ago, but it's happening now. University education, education full stop, is the power not only for yourself, but it's for so many more people that you've no idea who look up to you. Every one of those people out there on those stones have influenced more than just their immediate family. All parts of the family tree are ignited by that individual's self journey through that education pathway, let alone that one individual. You have a right to have a dream and you have so many people around you who will support you to achieve it that you ought never to hold yourself back from having a go. There'll be hiccups along the way, you've got to take time out every now and then on the journey. But if you stay focused on that dream you have for yourself, you'll achieve awesome things and make a real difference because others will look at you and think, I can be like that too. That's the greatest gift you can give.